welcome to Red Hot Mindset. I am so glad that you are tuning in with me today. Happy Friday. So my episodes normally come out on a Tuesday or a Thursday, but this one's kind of a bonus special episode. And I honestly needed a couple days to debrief before I recorded it. So that's why it is coming out today. But I wanted to share a recap of my Wheel of Fortune experience. So if you tuned in with me last Thursday, I told you a little bit about how I became a contestant on Wheel of Fortune and how I'm going to be surprising my dad that I was going to fly home to Minnesota. He had no idea I was a contestant. He had no idea it was airing and we were just going to surprise him. So we did. And it was so fun. I First of all, I'm so glad the cat's out of the bag. That was the hardest secret for me to keep. I'm pretty good at keeping other people's secrets, but when it comes to my own, I am not a good secret keeper. Man, I kept that for what? It was like about three months, man. Um, We taped early, well, mid-August, I went to LA and taped, and so it's been a while. So today I just wanna share a little bit about the taping experience. I'm gonna share a little bit about just being on the show in general and some about dad's surprise. I am going to be creating a reaction video. I'm hoping it's out today as well, but it'll be out sooner than later. We literally videotaped him the whole time during the show to see kind of what he would say and how he'd react when he found out I was on. But first, let's talk a little bit about the taping experience. Um, This is my favorite show. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, regular TV, I could care less about any other channel, but I'm really, really glad that I get channel 31 here in Colorado because I call it Wheel of Fortune channel. Uh, We really, we don't have cable. We don't have normal TV, really. We have like an antenna and it does give us a few channels. And that is one of the channels it gives us. So I'm very glad about it because it's just a pastime that my dad and I have had. Uh, You grew up watching it. We would have these battles to see who would win the most money because if you solved the puzzle, you got as much money as whatever they got, the contestant. And we just added up at the end. It's a hoot. It's so much fun. And we just, I don't know, we're a competitive family. So um, when I started beating my dad at puzzles, that was fun. And now, I get to share that with my boys, though they don't take as much appreciation to it as I do, but they do get excited when they solve a puzzle before me. But anyway, the taping experience was a whirlwind. It was, I think, in Thursday's episode last week. So you can go back and listen to that if you want. But uh, it was kind of a five-week process. I applied, found out a week later I was accepted for a tryout found out a week later I was accepted into the contestant bank and then about a week later found out that my taping date was two weeks away if I accepted it. So crazy whirlwind and mid-August I was flying to LA to Sony Studios to film Wheel of Fortune. Um, Now the experience itself was super fun because we also got to see the Jeopardy studio Granted, Jeopardy is not my favorite show, but I also grew up kind of watching that because my dad always watched that, uh, but I'm just not good at it. Trivia is not my thing. <laughs> so when I got an an- whenever I get an answer, I'm like, yeah, but it's probably won a show, maybe. So um, anyway, but it was fun to see the studio. We got to get ready in there. We learned all about all the rules and all the things that we needed to know. It was such a long day because they have us in there from pretty much seven until five. Uh, We are the audience for all the shows that day. So my hands were raw from clapping, but it was so fun because you got to connect with these um, other contestants from all over the nation. Most of them I would say were from California because they do have all their alternates come from California as well, just because if somebody can't show or now you have to take like COVID tests and all the things. So it's a lot harder to get there if you're not in the state. So they do have, which is interesting to me. That's now I realize why are there so many Californians? That's why, but it's so fun and getting to connect and meet new people and especially people who share my love for the show and, or for English or for word puzzles or whatever it is. And, um, It was kind of funny because I was sitting next to 
a couple of people, one, well, Bon, the one I, I had met him like on a virtual call as we were getting ready to come. And then Vanessa, I was sitting by and we kind of were a little posse over there. And then what they do is they actually draw out of a hat what, who you're going to be grouped with. Uh, they draw out of a hat what color you're going to be on. So uh, where you're going to be on the stage and when you are taping. So what order you go in. And it just so happened that the three of us ended up on the same show. So I thought that was pretty cool. And it was really fun to get to participate with them. We had a really good time. But you get to practice on the wheel beforehand, which is really nice because it's super heavy. I think they said it's like 400 pounds. And I actually believe it because it's really hard to spin. Um, and so we got to practice and it was kind of funny because they'd put up puzzles and you got to call letters. And one of my practice rounds, I spun and I call out, I think it was an L. I called out L and they're like, oh, sorry, that's already been called. And I, you know, had the whole hand to forehead. Ugh. And then I realized that's how people do it. It is really hard when it's actually live and you're looking at the letter board and you're looking at the puzzle board and it's like crazy fast, everything's going in full, full fledged, fast motion. And you just have to be super quick and on your feet. And so I now have a lot of empathy for everybody who has been a contestant. And as I watch the show moving forward, I'll have a little empathy and grace, even though I'll probably still yell at the TV because I do that a lot. Like, why can't, I can't believe you did that. And why did you buy that vowel and all these things? Well, you learn the secrets and the tips that they give you, and then you understand why people are doing certain things on the show, um, because there are some strategies involved, I guess. But um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty funny that I called an L and it was in the puzzle. I'm glad I got that out of my system at warm up, And um, then we just kind of got to hang out for a little bit. And then when it was your time to go on the show, you went and got ready really quick, talked over any uh finalizing pieces and different things like that. Your show is super quick. I mean, it really is only about a half hour and it, it seems like five minutes. It just, man, it goes, but you're up there and that puzzle board is huge. The wheel is small and heavy. You're talking to Pat Sajak. You're watching Vanna White. I mean, it's amazing. It is just such a cool experience. And then the audience is out there clapping. It's kind of sad now that it's only contestants who get to be in the audience and then anyone working. So you don't get to have like your husband or your best friend or your parent or anyone there to celebrate with you. Uh, but it, that's okay because the contestants all become kind of your little family for the day. And yeah, I don't know. It was, the, the wheel was really mean to us. And as I look back, I'm like, I didn't realize we had that many lose returns and bankrupts and stuff. Because really all I can think about is I've only missed one letter in the puzzles and it actually got back to me. So it's not like that really affected my game. Uh, and then the only other thing that would have been kind of my fault would be picking up that mystery wedge. But I'm telling you, I, I had to pick it up. I had co I went in with my rules. So my rules were, I'm only going to buy a vowel if I need it, if I really think it's going to help me. Um, and if I really don't know if there's other letters or, or I have too much money or something like that. Uh, one of my rules was with the mystery wedge, if I get land on it, if I have more than $3,000, I'm going to pass. Well, I had 3,400, I think. So with the extra thousand getting the letter, it would have been 4,400. And I just, I think I just wasn't going to sleep at night if I didn't know what was under there. So I, it would, and, and, you know, try, and you're trying to solve like really quickly make that decision because you don't want this, the game to slow down. You have to keep going. You got to be quick. And so I just did it. And really, what do you have to lose? Because you're coming in there with no money and there's a chance of $10,000 under there. Why wouldn't you do it? So I just, I did. And then I was so mad at myself, but it made it even funnier because I knew my dad would be mad at me. And I don't know if you caught that on the show, if you watched it, I even said that as I'm throwing the, the bankrupt mystery wedge away, I'm like, I'm going to get yelled at for that one. And I did. We'll talk about that. But, um, 
But yeah, that's really the only real slip up I had other than obviously I tried to solve that one puzzle really quickly in the beginning. I do have to preface that is a George Strait song uh, minus the the because I think it's just River of Love. But that would have been a really fantastic solve. So there you go. But I've never heard of the power of love. So that's fine. I guess if I would have seen the P or the W, I could have probably put that together. But I didn't wait for those. I think there were only like two letters up when I solved it or tried to solve it. So I can't get so mad about that. Um, and then, yeah, just the last couple of puzzles. I finally warmed up. I feel like the wheel started working for me. I got warm. I felt good. was really comfortable, a little bit less nervous, and just got on a roll. And it was so fun. It was fun to be able to solve those puzzles. And I think my favorite solve, though, was the last puzzle where I spun for the last spin. The two ends come up, and I solved the puzzle. I don't know where I pulled it out from, but I did. And that was really cool. I thought that was a highlight. Like, yeah, it would have been fun to go another round and make a little bit more money, but you just never know if you'll, you'll get back to you and you just got to do it as fast as you can. But that was, in my opinion, a pretty impressive solve. So that was pretty cool. And obviously the bonus round was just a dream. I mean, getting even just getting to the bonus round and then solving it. And I was, I mean, I squealed and was jumping up and down, not because... I, I mean, 39000 is the lowest dollar amount you can get, but I was squealing because I didn't win a car. <laughs> I just didn't. Um, I'm not big on the prizes because you have to pay taxes on them and all that stuff. So I would have much rather had cash. And I was just like over the moon that I solved it. And just what a dream. What a dream. And so it's super exciting. Um, so what happened with, oh, and the other thing is you really only get to meet Vanna if you solve uh, the bonus, if you get into the bonus round. Uh, you meet Pat up on stage, but they go backstage after every show and they don't even come, they don't come until the first show. So they're getting ready, they're changing clothes, they're doing all those things. So you do not get to really interact with them at all. So you only get to really meet Vanna and get to chat with her for a minute or so if you hit the bonus round. So that was pretty special to really get to say I met Pat and Vanna. And um, and I have to tell you, Jim, the announcer is hilarious. Actually, as a contestant, he's up there in the contestant row. So he actually comes and mingles and he chats with you and he tells jokes and he is a funny guy. So that was really entertaining as well. But that's just a little bit about the taping experience. Um, you know, and it really wasn't that hard to apply. It's just the whole doing it, you know, it's just an extra thing to do. But so if you've ever thought about doing it, it's not too late. You could totally go apply and see if you can get a tryout. So it's, it's fun. I mean, you do pay your way to get there, but I think that's why they always give a thousand dollars to everybody because that kind of helps with the travel to get there. And it's so worth the experience. Um, the best part, though, was making it special for my dad. And the one thing that I just loved about the taping is that Pat really got into the fact that I dedicated it to my dad. And, um, you know, he he really can't travel anymore because he just he's he's not healthy enough to do it. And um, he's just not feeling his best. He's just not. He's aging and it's it's one of those things I said, what can I do? What can I do to make something special for him and create a memory that can last? And I know that this is something he'll talk about forever. But I have to tell you, it was so funny because on Saturday when I got home, when I flew home, my mom and sister-in-law came and got me from the airport and my dad had no idea I was coming and we were surprising him. So when I walked in the door, he just, I was said something like, where are my pancakes? Because I love his pancakes. And um, I've never been able to make them the way he makes them. And I don't know why I make them the same exact way. They just never come out right. Uh, and he didn't notice my voice, nothing. And I'd said something else. So then I walk around the corner, he sees me, he turns and sees me, and then he goes back to what he's doing. <laughs> 
I'm like, what in the world? So it took him a while to realize that I was actually there. Later on, he goes, I thought it was a mirage. <laughs> so my dad is just sometimes confused a little bit these days, but he was so excited to see me, even though you couldn't see it on his face because he does he's kind of expressionless sometimes. But, um, but he thought that was the surprise was me coming home. And so on Tuesday, actually on Sunday, we watched Celebrity Wheel of Fortune together. Monday, we watched uh, Wheel of Fortune together, kind of like we normally would do anyway, but I just wanted it to feel normal. And then on Tuesday, we did what we called a send-off party. So that's how we got my brothers to be able to come. And my uncle came. He had no idea either that I was on the show. So we kind of surprised him as well. But um, when it came on... And I solved the, well, I didn't solve the first puzzle. I attempted the first puzzle. My uncle realized it. He started inching toward the TV and going, who's that? So he kind of got it, but we told him kind of to not say anything. My dad didn't know it was me. I'm not kidding you. So we're in, Pat's introducing me. He says, hey, this is, hey, Gabe Cox from Lakewood, Colorado. Um, you know, and I was saying I'm married to my best friend, Josh, and I have three boys, Ethan, Micah, and Gavin, and I'm sharing all this stuff and my dad's not getting it. And I'm wearing the same outfit that I'm wearing on the show. Like I decided to dress the exact same one to help my dad realize it's me, but two, cause I just thought would be fun. And he had no idea it was me. And we were all laughing and he's like, why are you laughing? Oh, is it because Gabe? And he points to the TV. So he knows the person's name is Gabe. And so he's thinking, well, you're laughing because there's a Gabe on the show and Gabe's here. And we're just like, oh my gosh. And then Pat says, you know, well, thanks Warren for watching. And my dad goes, is he talking about me? And we're all like, yes, he's talking about you. And he still didn't get it. So we're just, I mean, we laughed all the whole show. I mean, you couldn't even hear everything because we were just laughing because I thought he was pranking us. Like in the beginning, I honestly thought he was pretending that he didn't know it was me. Maybe that he had caught on and he knew the secret. So he was just kind of pranking us as well. But then we realized as we went, I was like, he really doesn't know, does he? He really doesn't know. And so, and it was kind of funny because When I picked up that mystery wedge, right away, he's like, I can't believe she did that. Like, why would she do that? What's she thinking? And he's talking about me as she, as I'm sitting right next to him. And I said, well, now I know how you really feel. Like, you really told me how you feel about me. It was so funny. He's like, no, no, no. But, um... Yeah. And so he goes, this, and then part of the show, he goes, this is the worst show I've ever seen. And he was talking about the bankrupts. He wasn't talking about the show itself. He was like, they're just landing on bankrupt every time. And so it was pretty funny, but at the end, like near the end, he talked and I thought for sure he was going to say, talk about, yeah, your dad will, you know, and get that part at the mystery wedge. My dad would be so mad and stuff. And nope, he didn't get it. But at the end, after the bonus round, I mean, we were even saying, just look, pay t- close attention. See if you can recognize anybody. Like we're pretty much telling him, you know, somebody on here. So figure it out. And he didn't figure it out. And so after the bonus round, when he, um, when Pat shows the 39,000 and we're all laughing and then Pat goes, you know, after this episode, I'm worn out too. And we're all cracking up because that was like my dad. That is for my dad. And my dad goes, how can he be worn out? His name's Pat. And we're like, dad, that was for you. Like he's literally saying that for you. And he goes, and he still wasn't getting it. So we had to like spell it out and go, that was me on there. That was me. He goes, how could it be you? That's not you. And because, so here's the backstory. He thought, and he's been, I'm granted, he's been watching Wheel of Fortune for more than 38 years. Well, probably 38 years since I was born. Okay. So at least he had no idea that they were taped beforehand. So he thought that the episode was live. So how could I have been on there if I'm sitting right next to him? 
So he was just really confused about that. I saw, I thought for sure in the beginning he'd go, wow, she looks a lot like you. And then we would have told him and it would have been funny. But, but so we think that's kind of why he didn't catch on the whole time. But it took a while for us to really convince him that that was me. And he goes, well, how'd you get on there? You know, and how, how does, how could that be? How can that be you? <laughs> so then he said, I think we have to watch it again. Granted, I love DVRs now for that reason, because we could. So we actually watched it a second time right away. And then he could hear all of the things that Pat and I had talked about, about him. And he realized that the show was for him and about him. And he thought it was really special. So it was interesting because I thought, do, should we have said something right away? Should we have told him as soon as I came on? But it was kind of funny seeing his reactions throughout the show. But I just, I felt bad because I was like, I don't know. Would the experience been better if he would have known the whole time? But we watched it again and he was, you know, and the experience was great. And I got him a couple shirts. One said, my daughter. And then there was an arrow with my picture uh, on the set of Wheel of Fortune. We all got one picture from their marketing crew. And um, so that was kind of special to get that. And then I had one that said, my daughter met Pat and Vanna on, I think it just said, my my daughter met Pat and Vanna. And a little, a little wooden sign that my friend Jody, who's amazing, made for me. And it looked like the puzzle board and it looked like the words on the puzzle board. And it said, Pat Sajak says he's worn out too. And it was pretty cute because my dad says worn out and worn spelled as W-A-R-R-E-N, like his name, because that's his name. And that's why he calls himself worn out, which is why he was confused that Pat would say it because Pat name is not worn. Um, but yeah, so it was super fun. And then my parents are puzzle, puzzle got puzzle people, which I am too. So I made a puzzle of the picture that they had sent me for them. So little fun things. And we just, we just cracked up and had a great time. But I think it was even better that I got to go to the bonus round and win and just be able to dedicate that to my dad. And my dad says I owe him half of the money. So there's that. And um, anyway, I just, that experience, I, it was an experience of a lifetime. And honestly, I can't tell you how many, my messages were just flooded right after. I like, I was up until after midnight and then I got up for my flight back to Colorado at five in the morning and I was just exhausted. But it was so fun. And it was, I just, any of you who did send me a message, I am so thankful for that. And just the encouragement and support and how excited you all were that it was a surprise for my dad and just that you want to hear his reactions and you know, I want to know how it went for him and for the surprise. And I tell you, it was priceless. It was not exactly what I expected, but. It is a memory that he is going to have forever and he is going to get to talk about it forever. And it's something special that I can cherish and just say that was a gift for him and um, really made his day. I thought, well, actually what was funny was the day before we were watching the show and he goes, he makes a comment like, I would never be on the show. It's too far to travel. <laughs> We're just like cracking up because obviously the next day I was going to be on it. Um, but that was the experience. It was an experience of a lifetime. I mean, if I were to be on any game show, that would be the one I'd want to be on. I've always thought I'd do it with him, like by my side. And that would have been really cool. But that's not possible. And this is the next best thing. But um, I'm very happy I, we were able to keep it a secret and not tell him. And he had no idea. I think we kept it too good of a secret, but it was it was so great. And just the fact that even the news stations um, bought into the surprise and were excited about it, that just, it just made me so happy that we could do that for him. So I don't know, this is just a, a quick episode to tell you all about it. I know people are asking, how was it? What was the taping like? What was it being like being on there? And so I just want to give you a little little snippet of that. If you have follow-up questions, if there's anything I didn't share that you would want to know, um, feel free to reach out and ask. I'll either uh, tell you in a different episode 
answer those questions or maybe I'll just answer you then. I don't know. Um, I just knew that if I were to tell everybody one-on-one -on -one how it went, that would be a lot of work. <laughs> so I figure why not just record an episode, let you know, and I'll get those reaction videos out. They should be out pretty soon here for his reactions. And it, I'm telling you, it's priceless. It's so funny. And he's just, he is just a wonderful dad. And I'm very thankful that I still have some time with him and that I get to cherish this with him for a long time. And I know people are like, oh, you're a celebrity. You're, you're a star. You were on TV. And it's like, yeah, but tomorrow it'll, it goes back to normal and everyone forgets about it. And it's totally fine because that's just the way it is. Um, but my dad won't forget, you know, and I won't forget. It was really, really special. The only thing that would have made it better is if my kids could have been there with me because we left them and my husband back in Colorado because there's just too much going on with school and activities and all the things. My youngest had a wrestling meet and my boys have a gymnastics meet coming up. And so we just decided it was better for them to stay back. And so I was kind of disappointed I didn't get to share it with them. But they did set up a video camera, so I get to see what their reactions were throughout the show. But they were they were pretty mad at me that they I didn't get to share it because they didn't know anything. They didn't know the air date until everyone else did. They didn't know that I won until after watching the show. And they found out an hour after everyone in Minnesota because uh, it's 6.30 Mountain Time and Central Time. So it was um, 5.30 in Colorado when it aired in Minnesota. So... We had to try and keep it secret from them until after it aired there too. So that was pretty hard, but the rest of it was also special. And um, I don't know, I don't have anything else to say about it right now, but I guess I just, I'm still, it's been a whirlwind. I got home yesterday back to Colorado and it's still sinking in. So it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, like really who knows what I'll end up making. I don't get it for, I don't get the money for a while still. Um, and I don't know how much taxes are going to come out because they like to tax you to death anyway. Um, but it was kind of the reason that we ended up being able to purchase a house in Colorado because the market here is super uber crazy, way crazier than Minnesota, which Minnesota market is going crazy too. But we had to pretty much put our savings into the house in order to get it. So this was kind of our, um, what pushed us over to be able to do that. And so I'm just so, so thankful. And here's the other thing. Um, I just feel like in everything that we've done, God's hand has been on it every time. And in our move and in transitions of work and everything, God has always met us where we're at and he's always met our needs. And he's always said that. I say this every time, I feel like, but he's always said that. He's always going to meet our needs. And so part of me was like, come on, where's my favor? $100,000 would have been cool or, you know, the million dollar wedge and all that stuff. But God has always made me trust him, especially in finances. He's always made me trust him. He says, I've got you, but you need to trust, you know? And this is no different. He knew exactly what we needed. And he came through and he provided in such an odd, unique way that we couldn't have even imagined. I had no idea that me applying at that specific time and getting on at that specific time was his timing and made us be able to uh, have a house and build a life here in Colorado with the boys. And it was the perfect timing. We needed to get out of uh, the other house because we, um, my cousin Juan was going to be selling it soon. I know they probably would have let us stay as long as we wanted to, but we wanted to respect that. We want them to sell when the market's hot, but it's hard to buy when the market's hot. So that was God saying, I see you. And so I just want, I want to encourage you if you're going through something. I mean, I tell you a lot of times it's financial for us. If you're going through something, trust him. Remember that he will meet your needs. And let him see it through. And it might be in the most unique way that you wouldn't have imagined. It might not be you going on Wheel of Fortune. Maybe that's not your cup of tea. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it'll come from an unexpected place. Because his plans are so much greater than our plans. His ways are so much greater than our ways. And I couldn't have pictured the way that he was going to provide and take care of us. And now I just... 
it's it, it's just an amazing thing. I'm always in awe because every time I feel like we are in need or every time I feel like things are slipping and it's getting hard, he always comes through. I think sometimes he lets it be hard because he wants us to put our full trust in him, in his plans, and in his timing. So I really encourage you to do that today. Trust him. Trust him with your finances. Trust him with your jobs. Trust him with these mandates. Trust him in everything that you do because he is king and he is in control and he loves you more than anything else and he loves you more than anyone else ever will. Isn't that crazy to think about? What kind of love is that? There's no love greater than that. He is love. God is love. All right, with that, in all things I pray, you just run your race. I believe in you. Thank you.